Welcome back. In the last video, we successfully created a user. We added the functionality so that we can sign a user up and we tested it with Postman. In this video, we will do the same for signing in a user. And this really differs to the sign in process you probably know from Laravel because we're not going to use the session based approach, but as shown in the authentication theory video, earlier in this video series in this playlist here, we're going to send back a token, a JSON web token. Now let's see how we can create such a token and send it in this lecture, in this video. Now creating such a token is not super simple, but there are packages which do it for us. For example, JWT auth by time and designs. You can simply Google for Laravel JWT auth or just JWT and you will find this GitHub repository. There you will also find a link to the wiki which explains how to install it. So let's check this. It tells us that we should grab this code here, this version number and go back to our Laravel project. And in there, in the composer.json file, composer is the um, PHP package manager, which manages the dependencies of our project. In this file here, we configure which dependencies we want to use. And here under require, I'm going to add this entry I just copied so that we require this package version 0.5, which is needed for Laravel 5. If you're using Laravel 4, use version 0.4. So this version here, and now with that, we're telling our project kind of that we want to have this. Now in order to download it, because this edition here alone doesn't do the trick, we have to go back to the terminal, navigate into our project folder and run composer, whoops, update, which will update our dependencies and fetch any dependencies we haven't downloaded. And we did add this one dependency. So this is now getting downloaded and added to our project. This is how we add third party packages to a level project. So let's wait a couple of seconds until this is done and then I'll be back. So the setup process uh, finished and it also updated a couple of other packages here in my project, but this is the important one here, which we added. Now with it installed, we can go through the other instructions and now we added the package to our PHP project, but Laravel still isn't aware of it. We do make it aware by copying this entry here, which is by kind of the path to this newly installed package, the namespace. And in our Laravel project, we go to the config folder and then to the app.php file. And down there, if we scroll down, we got a providers array. Now providers are basically packages Laravel uses. It will kind of boot them whenever we create or when we start the Laravel app, which is the case for every request we send to it. So here we can add our own service providers or the third party package service providers. So here we add this namespace. Important though, add colon colon class at the end and a comma. So this will point to this package we just downloaded. And this package also happens to ship with a hand for handy uh, facade we can use. So let's copy this facade too. And back in the app.php file in the config folder, down there under aliases, we can register our own facades. And here we register the facade we just copied. Now the documentation is not correct on this one. This shouldn't be a string here as the value. Instead, it, instead it should be the path to the class. So with colon colon class again, as we had to add it for the service provider. With this, we now added the package, which we downloaded also to our Laravel application. And we created this alias, this facade we can now use. And now with that added, we can go back to the terminal to run one additional command here. And that is PHP artisan vendor publish. This will kind of get a config file, this package, this JWT package ships with and put it in our root config file so that we can easily edit the configuration of this package. Not every third party package has to have such a configuration, but this one happened to have one. For this to work, we should then also add dash dash provider equals and now simply in a, in a string, so in quotation marks. So going back to this documentation, can also scroll down to see this command here. It's this path. So let's add it between the quotation marks and hit enter. And this will now give us this configuration file. If we go to this configuration file, it has been added to our config folder here under JWT. We can now configure this package. Now the default should be fine, but you can adjust things like how long should such a token be valid here under time to live. 
then how long are you able to refresh a token? So you can kind of send a request which sends the existing token and requests a new one because the old one is about to expire maybe and so on. Now again, the most settings should be fine. Important here, point to the model you're using for your user. And we're using the app slash user model in this file here, so we're fine. But if you use a different file, a different model, different class name, make sure to adjust this setting here. But one thing we definitely need to change is the secret. Now again, the secret is what we're encoding the token with. And we need the secret to validate a token later on. This is the one thing which ensures that we're not getting sent random strings by the user so that we always know if a token is valid or not. Now the package we install chips with a convenience method, this one here, PHP partition JW to generate, which generates such a, uh, such a secret. So let's run it. And you now you see that this file has been populated with this secret, which is now used to sign our token. Now with this in place, we can start creating tokens and validating users or signing users in. Now we do so in the user controller. I'll add a new method, public function sign in like this. And I know that I get the request object here. And then, well, I first want to validate the data I don't have to check if the email address is unique though, because I'm not storing it in the database. I'm just seeing if I do have one and if it is a valid email address. And with this in place, we can now, well, sign the user in. For this, I'm going to try something. So I'm using a try catch block here. I'm catching a JWT exception. Make sure to import it from timen slash backslash JWT off backslash exceptions. So I would catch this exception here if it fails. And what I'm trying in here is I try to create a token. So here in the if block, I'll see if I'm successful. So if I don't create a token here, I try to store it in a token variable though with the JWT off facade and make sure to use JWT off here. This is the import you need to add. So with this facade, I'm calling the attempt method and this is kind of like the same method on the normal level authentication. It's called attempt for a reason because you attempt to sign the user in. And here we have to pass the credentials. Now we can retrieve them and store them in a let's say credentials um, variable here by reaching out to a request and with the only method we can get the data we're interested in. And I'm only interested in a field named email and password, so in these two data pieces, which are stored as an array in credentials, and then I pass credentials here. Whoops, credentials, like this. So with this, I'm passing credentials to the attempt method, and I try to create such a token. Now, if this fails here, then it fails. So if this if check fails, I should say, not if this try block is triggered, but if this if check fails, then this is the case because the credentials are not valid. And here, of course, is a typo credentials. So make, let's make sure to spell it like this. So that it is correct. So credentials, if this fails, then I will return a response, a JSON response, of course, with the error code 401 for unauthenticated. And I will send a error field in this JavaScript object I'm basically sending back, where I say invalid credentials like this. Now this is, if this fails, if this whole block fails, then this happens because we somehow failed creating such a token. So here I then want to return a response, a JSON response of course, 500 would be an appropriate status code and also with the error field and here I say could not create token. So something went wrong during the token creation. The, um, the token package here basically failed. Now if all that is successful though, then I can return another response. And in this response here, I simply return the token. So status code 200 let's say. And then in the JavaScript object kind of what it will be in the end, I have let's say a token field. And in this token field, I basically store the token. So here, my token variable, which is here set, which I only reach if this was successful. 
So with this, I'm sending back the token if we successfully sign in. Now we need to add a route in the api.php folder. I'm copying the post route here and I'll name it user slash sign in, linking to the sign in method in the user controller. And with this in place, let's go back to postman and there let's go to slash sign in. These are valid signing credentials here, of course. Let's hit send and we get back a token here. So this is the token which you can now store to send it with subsequent requests we make to our uh, to protected resources to get access to those resources. Now I will show you how to store this token in Angle 2 application once we reach that front end building part again. But we will use this token beginning in the next section, in the next video I should say, when we start sending it via Postman to get access to protect resources. Before in that though, before doing that though, let's see what happens if I send invalid credentials like an email address which doesn't exist. Now I get invalid credentials. And if I send something which isn't the in, uh, uh, email address, we get the email must be a valid email address. So this is all working. On we go to the next video when we will use this token to get access to protected resources. See you there. Bye.